I will take us through some major changes in specified forms. A new set of specified forms is introduced and should be used with effect from the 3rd of March 2014. There are 92 forms, including 84 for use and filing with the company register. The form numbers of the whole set of new forms are basically based on the existing ones so that they are user friendly. Many of the new forms have been derived from existing forms. As a matter of fact, 29 of them are completely new forms. In order to help you differentiate new and old ones, we're adding the prefix n to all the new forms. For example, n in C1, you can look at it and you would know it is derived from the existing NC1 form. For 92 forms on the 1st of February on our website, you will find them and you'll be able to download them from the website. There are 24 completely new forms, but of course I cannot possibly take you through all of them today. But they are already contained in slides 3 to 15. In 2013, number two external circular, we have all listed out 92 new forms. And all the uh, specified forms have also been gazetted. The external circulars, and you can refer to the gazettes and also our websites. Now, let's jump to slide number 16. Here, we can see some major changes. First of all, NAR1, this is AR, you can see the existing AR1 under the new regime, form AR2 and AR3 will become obsolete upon implementation of the new ordinance. So you simply need to fill in NAR1. In NAR1, you can refer to Schedule 6 to find out how to fill in this part. So let's have a look at the new form and see how it's different from the old one. You can find all the information from slides 17 to 20. Let's open the new form for your reference. This is the new NAR1. First of all, item 3, type of company. In the new form, there are three types, private company, public company, and company limited by guarantee. Right now, we only have private and others. The next difference. Item 4. Day to which this return is made up. For private limited company, there's no change. We are still talking about the anniversary of incorporation of the company. For public companies, 
this is going to be the date of uh, six months after the completion of the accounting reference date for guarantee company nine months after the completion of the accounting reference date if it is public or guarantee company if they want to submit the AR according to the new regime they will use the date of the AJM. You may see the small print here. And they explain the calculation of this date to which the return is made up. Another difference will be on the next page, page two. Item 10, share capital. Since the par value will become obsolete, you do not need to fill in registered capital. There will no be any will not be any premium or asset redemption for issued shares the uh, total amount and total amount paid up or regarded as paid up should incorporate those two next difference is page three company secretary natural person you can see the address is different uh, under the new regime. Company secretary as a natural person no longer needs to declare the address to us. So what's needed here is the correspondence address. And then page seven, page seven of this form. particulars of members there are two different schedules for non-listed companies you go to schedule one there's a company you go to schedule two let's look at schedule one on the next page you can see this is schedule one Compared to AR1, particulars of members is basically the same. Even the format is the same. But what about Schedule 2? This is Schedule 2 for listed companies. What do you need to put in here? Particulars of members who held 5% or more of the issue shares. Now let's go back. Page 7. Now item 14. Company records. In the existing AR1, you only need to fill in company members and addresses um, for the debtors. But for the new form, you need to put down company records, register, registers, uh, minutes, memorandum, so on and so forth. If such documents are not kept at the register, you need to tell us where they are. And then item 15, this is the statement concerning private companies. It's again very similar to the existing form, but there is a box for you to tick as an active statement. All right, 
these are the changes made to the AR. Now, let's look at ND2A. ND2A concerns notice of change of company secretary and director appointment and cessation. They uh, would replace the existing two D2A form. Again, it is more or less the same, except one obvious difference. Concerning the natural person as the company secretary, the address, as I have already said, you do not need to put down the residential address, but just the correspondence address is fine. We're talking about director and company secretary sharing the space. So for the company secretary, you fill in the correspondence address. But if it is a director, you put down your residential address still. This is different because it needs to be submitted within 15 days of the change, not 14 days. Next. ND2B. This is notice of change in particulars of company secretary and director. It replaces D2B at the moment. Again, I'm sure you can guess what difference there is on this form. It is about the natural person company secretary about the address. The space is shared with the director, so if it is a natural person company secretary, it will be the correspondence address. If it is a director, we need the residential address. Other than using it as a correspondence address for the ComSec, if the secretary doesn't want to use the office address as a correspondence address, the company secretary can tell us where that address is by using this form. The form should be submitted within 15 days of the change, not 14 days. Next, let's look at ND4. How is it different? There is no difference. It's the same. Next. Form NSC1. Return of allotment. because there's no more part value. There's no limitation on registered assets and you do not need to fill in the premium of the shares because there's no more premium. Item three on page one, totals of this allotment. As a result of this allotment, the company's issued share capital increased by the following amount, currency and amount. Sometimes new shares have been allotted, but the amount is not increased. You can put a tick here. Number four, details of shares allotted for A. You can fill in for A if shares allotted for cash consideration, if part or whole are not for cash consideration, you need to fill in for B and for C. What's different? D4 
Details of non-cash consideration for which the shares have been allotted. You only need to fill in the particulars and fill in the necessary relevant information. I'm sure you are aware. If the contract is not in black and white, in the past, SC5 will have to be attached with this, but that will cease to exist in the future. We have Schedule 1 instead, containing the particulars of contract. Let's look at Schedule 1 now. This is Schedule 1. This is SC5. Yes. In terms of the content and the format, they are the same. And another difference, and let's see one. Which page? Page four. Statement of capital. In a new regime, this statement of capital would be attached for companies to report to the share capital situation after changes have been made. So that is an at C1 in terms of the differences. The next one would be form NR1. You will fill in the change of address of registered office. The content and format is the same as R1. The only difference is is to be submitted within 15 days after the change has been made instead of 14 days. So these are the changes in the forms. Let's return to our slides concerning transitional arrangements. Let's move on to slide number 27. Under the new regime, on the 3rd of March this year, there is a transitional period of three months. Other than collecting new forms, we will accept all forms. But after three months, beginning on the 3rd of June, we will stop accepting old forms. Of course, there are exceptions. Ms. Yao already talked about this. For some forms, there will be no transitional period. NC1, NC1G, DR1 and also N12. For these forms, in the new regime, they will become obsolete right away and you must submit only the new forms. M1 is subject to a different arrangement. The transitional period is not three months but eight weeks. Within that period, we will continue to accept all forms When the period lapses on the 8th of April, that is, we will only accept the new forms. Within the eight week period, if you submit the existing M1, it must be accompanied by a certified true copy of the instrument creating or evidencing the charge. 
later on this will be returned to the deliver within the eight weeks if you submit a new form an M1 it must be accompanied by a certified true copy of the instrument once registered and M1 and the certified true copy they will be registered together and the certified true copy will not be returned to the person As for existing M2, once the new regime begins, there is no grace period or transitional period. New form NM2 must be used immediately. So that's all for me. Thank you.